guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanna go through five beginner watercolor mistakes that you really should avoid. I'm gonna be giving you guys some tips on how you can avoid doing them as well. So let's get straight into it with mistake number one, and that is choosing completely the wrong type of paper for your watercolor paintings. And so what I mean by this is picking a type of paper that isn't meant for watercolors. So it might be that you're trying to paint in your sketchbook that has got quite thin paper in, and it's not really like, thick and designed for painting or wet mediums to be applied to it. And so for watercolor painting, it is one of those mediums where it is so important that you have the paper that is right for it and paper that is quite good quality. And so my favorite type of paper that I like to use for watercolors is the Arches hot pressed and cold pressed watercolor paper. But there's no reason that you have to go for a really, really expensive one. Just look at your local art store and pick up a watercolor paper that looks quite thick, you know, something around 100 140 pound in paperweight that will be really good and look to see what sort of finish it is. If it's hot pressed then that means that it's quite smooth whereas if it's cold pressed then that means it has a bit more texture to it. Once you've chose your watercolor paper, then you need to start thinking about how you wanna prepare it and get ready for painting. And so what I like to do is I actually like to tape either side of the paper down before I start painting, but other people like to stretch it as well. I've never really tried that, but I know a lot of people do, but a lot of artists do decide to tape down each side of their watercolor paper. And why this is beneficial is because if you don't do anything, if you just like leave it and try and paint on it, then it will warp and buckle quite a lot and you'll have that sort of wavy look to the paper. And so to avoid that, I definitely recommend taping it down so that when it dries, it's much more likely to dry nice and smooth and it really does restrict and reduce the amount of warping to your paper. Mistake number two is not using the right amount of water for the effect you're trying to get. And so this could either mean that you're using too much water or too little water. If you use too much water, then you can get pooling where a lot of the water kind of forms in one spot, especially when you get waves in the paper, it will just kind of fall in the dips. And this can mean that you don't get an even sort of layer and wash. It also means it can dilute the colors so they're not as rich and pigmented. And it also just means that you don't have as much control because a lot of the colors can run and bleed into each other. So it's harder to get those finer details and those crisp edges. And on the other hand, if you use too little water, then you might not get a very fluid look and a smooth look because you might just have a lot of texture. It might catch on certain parts of the paper and not be like smooth all the way down and not flow. It might just like skim across the surface of the paper. And so it can be really good if you want texture. But for example, if you're painting skin and you wanna get a nice smooth and, smooth and even coverage, then you don't wanna have a dry paintbrush because it'll just make it look too textured. So it's okay to use quite a bit of water and not enough water, just you need to make sure that it's like right for the effect you're trying to get. If it's not, really think about how much water you should be applying to your paintbrush. Also, if your paper is already wet, for example, if you've pre-wetted it because you want a wet on wet technique and you want it to sort of bleed softly into each other, you don't need to have too much water then on your paintbrush because what that means is that that's even more water and so you might want it to just slightly bleed into each other. But if you add even more water, then it's just gonna become really, really wet because you've already wet the paper and so it'll become a lot less controllable. The third mistake that a lot of beginners make with watercolor is simply not planning enough and not really thinking about the techniques they wanna use like purposefully to get the effects that they want. And so not planning can lead to a lot of issues. It can mean that you're not picking the right colors and when you add lots of colors, they become very muddy and not very nice to look at, not very bright and vibrant. And it can also mean that if you don't plan and you just go and add lots of watercolor, you might not think about the areas that you need to preserve. And so for example, it can be very hard to add white paint on top of watercolors and kind of get that white look of the paperback. So a lot of watercolor artists try to preserve the white areas that they want for the highlights. And so if you don't plan out these areas and you don't know where your highlights are gonna be, and then you do your first wash and cover the whole of the paper and then realize that you needed an area to be brighter and you wanna get that paper look back then it's already too late and you can't do that so it's really important to plan everything out so you know the areas where you want to like avoid adding watercolor so they are white and bright and you can sort of preserve those highlights and really plan the colors so that you don't run the risk of adding lots of different colors the more bleeding into each other and it just becoming very muddy 
And also in the planning stages, you need to think about what techniques will best sort of represent the effects that you're going for. And so if you do want the colors to really softly bleed into each other and get that blurred out of focus effect, then a wet and wet technique would be really, really good for you. But on the other hand, if you're trying to go for lots of fine details and really, really crisp lines and edges, and you want it to look very sharp, then you don't really want to be using a wet and wet method where you just get lots of colors bleeding into each other and you don't get any defined lines. You'd be much better off using the wet and dry method. So it's much better to actually think about the techniques that you're going to use before you even touch your paintbrush to the paper. Mistake number four is not waiting long enough for your layers to dry and getting impatient and just going straight over the top with another layer without letting the previous one dry. It is so important to work in layers so that you can build up the details and add the depth in the painting, start with your lighter washes and build up to those dark ones. But also when you work in layers, you really need to make sure that you're letting the underneath layers dry. Because if you don't, if you add say a layer of black paint and then you wanna go in, I don't know, with um, say a bit of pink on top for some reason but you haven't let that black dry say it's still a tiny bit damp if you have too much water on your paintbrush for example and you try to add the pink then all it's going to do is it's really going to make that a lot more watery it's going to mix in with the black and you're not going to have a smooth look it's going to create those little pools of water and really push against it so you're going to have these weird sort of effects and like that's it's fine if that's what you're going for but if it's not then you need to be aware for example if you have a black background of wet paint and then you drop in water then you get lighter areas and it's a cool effect but you need to be careful that you're not doing it by mistake. So definitely wait between each layer to make sure it's fully dry. You can go in with a hair dryer on the cool setting and just go over your paper and that helps it dry quicker. I do that all of the time if you don't want to have to wait ages. But if you've got a lot of water down and you try and go in with a hair dryer, then be aware that it can push all of the sort of colors out and it can make them spread more. So be careful with that. I'd let it dry a little bit first and then just finish it off with a hair dryer. And the fifth and final mistake that I see a lot of beginner watercolor artists make is simply not utilizing the large range of effects that you can get with watercolors and using these simple techniques to really make your painting a lot more interesting. So for example, I have got two videos, one where I go through five really cool effects you can get with watercolors and another which is like 10 techniques for watercolors. So I'll link them up above and at the end and in the description so you can check them out. And I go through lots of really cool effects that you might not have even thought of, like using salt and using cling film and using tissue to get some really cool effects a lot easier and add a lot of interest to your watercolor work. Watercolors are such a fun medium to work in and there is so many cool effects you can get so it's really fun to actually learn these and apply them to your work and it really will take it up to that next level I hope you guys found those tips useful. If you did and you enjoyed watching me create this tiger and you wanna learn how I painted it in real time with me talking through the process, then that is available on my Patreon along with loads of other real-time tutorial series. I've got like 100 tutorials on there now that you can go and check out in real time, whether that's for color pencil, watercolor, graphite, whether that's portrait or animal work, it's all on there for you guys. All for just a small amount per month. I'll leave that in the description and at the end so you can check that out. Anyway guys that is it for this video I really hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here but I'll see you guys in the next video bye everybody